that's right. We're right here Thursday afternoon. Jonathan Brody, who is District Sales Manager for Colette Travel, is here with us. He's actually going to be um, out there at Piedmont Tech this evening with Gene Houston. Gene, of course, they're going to be talking about the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. And we thought, what a great time to get him to come on the air and tell us a little bit about uh, Colette Vacations. You know, it's the time of the year where people start thinking about vacations and taking a nice trip if you're so lucky. Uh, but uh, anywho, <laughs> it certainly is an interesting story of how this business started. Jonathan, how are you doing today? Very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. In fact, I find it very interesting that uh, you went to school for history. You ended up selling plumbing supplies, wholesale plumbing supplies. How did you ever get into um, travel? Well, you know, it's it's funny. Um, I, I graduated into a, a pretty terrible job market. So, you know, when we, was that? Two thousand two thousand nine. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it, it it was pretty slim out there, and um, you know, I, I pretty much took what I could get outside of college, and uh, I, I did that for um, almost two years. And uh, I kind of I woke up one day and. You know, I just said to myself, there's no way, I, I can't talk to anybody else about their plumbing issues anymore. So you know, I went home and uh, you know, I, I just got on the internet and I, I started job searching and I found something from Colette and you know, it was like get paid and travel and I was like, you're kidding me, I can do that? <laughs> That's pretty neat, yep. that, uh, that is pretty neat. But when you went to school for um, history, what was the idea? I mean, I'm always curious as to what people thought they would do with something. You know what? I um, I originally wanted to go to law school, mm -hmm. and um, I, I did kind of like a job shadow at an immigration law office in Charlotte for a couple of days. And um, after that, I just I realized that this just wasn't for me. And unfortunately, you know, that was nearing the end of my junior year in college. So um, I ended up taking a, a few internships for for sales and marketing, and kind of the rest is history. But yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, exactly. ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it is interesting that you end up doing internships near the end. Seems like they should be done first to see if you want to really pursue the career that you're thinking about, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, and I've, uh, at the beginning of college, I, I spent my time having fun during the summertime. So, you know, by the end of it, yeah, I was like, used... okay, i got to get my act together now. <laughs> I think, you know, that used to be what college was all about, wasn't it? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And where did you go to school? Uh, UNC Charlotte. That was a fun school to go to. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, the football team was started after I graduated. You know, the stadium is fantastic. Right. So, uh, but anyways, and where are you from originally? Uh, originally from uh, South Florida, actually, Naples. Wow. That's a change. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I miss the beach for sure. I miss the beach for sure, <laughs> absolutely. Well, it is good to have you here. You uh, are going to be talking about this Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, and that is, what, October 5th through the 10th? What can you tell us, uh, just to kind of tease us about going on this trip? Well, um, of course, the big highlight is the Balloon Fiesta, and believe it or not, it's actually one of the most photographed events in the entire world. And it's absolutely amazing seeing all of these balloons launch at the same time. And not only do you get to see them early morning, so in the daytime, but you also get to see them at night. Um, you know, you get to experience the Turquoise Trail, Route 66. Uh, we actually go to the uh, National Museum of Nuclear Science and History. And to cap off the tour, we visit the Santa Fe School of Cooking. And you get to do a cooking class, kind of Southwestern style. So the nice thing about this is you add in some other aspects while you're there in uh, while you're in Albuquerque. Exactly. Well, one of the big things that we really like to do on all of our tours is kind of do more than just scratch the surface. You know, we, we want you to really get a, a feel for um, the local culture while you're with us. Yeah. Well, that, you know, that, it looks really, really neat. And of course, you know, travel is something that I think is uh, it, it just gets you away from the regular everyday grind of things. Yes, definitely. So, do you get to ride in any balloons on the balloon things uh, here? Unfortunately, you don't get to ride in any of the balloons. I <laughs> wish you did. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Wow. Okay. But um, and when you go on a trip with Colette, do you have to worry about anything? You know what? You really don't. We actually have a very industry-leading uh, insurance and cancellation waiver. So, uh, with our insurance. 
You can actually cancel the tour up to 24 hours before the tour leaves for any reason whatsoever, and we actually give you a full cash refund. Wow. Yep. And so the same insurance also covers you while you're on tour. So, I mean, really the whole nine yards, you know, you're covered. And how about just as far as getting from point A to point B and doing all these activities? I think I know that you actually have a tour director that makes sure that your travel is supposed to be easy and worry-free. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's one of the biggest selling points, I think, for Colette because uh, we do have some of the greatest tour managers in the industry. And one of the things that sets us apart is that we actually employ our tour management. So they only work for Colette. They don't work for other companies and they're not contracted out in the destination. So, you know, with that, they really do have a more vested interest in making sure that everybody's having a great time on tour and they're getting to see and do all the things that they want. And, you know, a lot of them have been with us for 10 plus years. So, I mean, they're a fantastic resource. And a lot of the people that are doing this are, um, aren't they, retired and so they, and they have a real interest in some aspect of history or some pa of where they are going in this. That's what I understand. Exactly. Yep, definitely. That makes it uh, more interesting when you have somebody that really wants to be in that area and really show off that area. Yes, ma'am. And I suppose there's a lot of great advantages to, um, to being there because I'm sure they get some special deals on the travel themselves. <laughs> yeah, they do. Okay, all right. So that's that's pretty cool. But um, Jean Houston has been doing this. Gosh, she's been doing this for several years now. Oh yeah, I think she's been doing travel with us for almost a decade. Almost a decade. Almost a decade. Wow, and uh, she really enjoys what she does. Oh yeah, she absolutely loves it, and I mean, it kills her. I mean, she's gone on 99% of the tours that she offers, and it right. kills her when she can't go and attend, you know, with one of her groups. And I think, um, I'm almost positive that Antarctica is the only continent that she hasn't visited so far. Wow, that's terrific. And and y'all just came back from the Galapagos Islands and uh, Machu Picchu, right? Yep. Yep. How it did, did you know how that trip went? You know, I talked to Jean earlier today, and she said that it was absolutely fantastic, that everybody had a great time. It's uh, it's one of our small group tours, so um, actually only 14 people went with them, and she said the Galapagos were amazing. And of course, the, the ship that we use in the Galapagos, the Galapagos Legend, um, it's one of the largest ships that operates down there. So uh, it's 100 people on the ship, and you get to kayak and snorkel and swim every single day. Do you get to ride the big Galapagos turtles? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> See, um, I'd be trouble on yeah, one of these, exactly, wouldn't I? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. But, um, but that, that, that's really neat, and I know she was really looking forward to the trip, so uh, I just wanted to mention that. But um, that was the 4th through the 17th, so uh, good stuff here. Now, as far as you going on trips, what's your favorite place? What has been so far your most favorite place uh, to visit? My favorite place so far was uh, Portugal, I think, by far, and then Porto at that. I think that was my favorite city. And uh, Why was that your favorite? You know, it, it just it really took me by surprise. I, I, I don't think that, um, you know, I had any expectations for Portugal before I went. Um, you know, it was uh, just one of those things where I didn't have any imagery in my mind about certain things. And you know, Did you want to go to Portugal or were you, no, that was like, uh, uh, Jonathan, you're going to Portugal yeah. on this trip? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually, I chose it because I'd never been there before. Right, yeah. You know, so I was kind of curious about it. And then when I got there, I was completely blown away. I could not believe it. I mean, you know, the history, the culture, uh, the architecture, the food, and, and really the biggest part, I think, were uh, the people. The people were just absolutely fantastic. They were so gracious and, you know, they were so eager to share their culture and their language with you. That's cool. That's very cool. Hey, I'm here with Jonathan Brody. He is the district sales manager for Colette Travel. And when we come back, we're going to talk more to him. Hey, if you've got a question, give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Tonight out there at Piedmont Tech, they are going to have an informational center talk on Albuquerque Balloon Festival going to be a fabulous one. It doesn't come up till October, but you got to go ahead and get it booked now. So October 5th through the 10th of this year. Hey, we'll be right back. 
Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. Wouldn't you like to go in, uh, out there to Albuquerque, the balloon fiesta, and see all those balloons? You know, I, you know, I think that one of the things that uh, I, I've been to, I've been to, I've been a lot of different places, but it's like going to Arlington Cemetery. Okay, you can see the pictures on TV of the rows and rows of markers and all this kind of stuff. Until you're standing right there, you cannot appreciate the, the overpowering feeling that you get in some of these places. I'm, that's what I'm thinking about the Albuquerque tour. I mean, to be able to have all these balloons. I mean, yeah, you can watch it on TV, but it's not the same as seeing it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, just watching hundreds of balloons launch at the same time. I mean, not only the sight, but the sound and just the experience being there. I mean, there's absolutely nothing better. Well, you know, as we all get older, we all want memories. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and travel is one of the great, greatest places to get it. So, uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I imagine, I imagine that the last few years have been a little difficult with travel, with people having to cut back and everything. And it's actually been picking up more recently. I think uh, people are ready to, to get out and, and throwing and have caution a to the wind. Yeah, I know, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're they're ready to go out and experience some things, you know, before it, it may be too late. You know, I don't want. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, what about children on trips? Um, well, we actually we do have a specialized line of tours uh, for the family, so it's a family, family, family yeah. product. Yep. Yeah. And, oh, okay. Um, you know, we, we designed them uh, with the entire family in mind, and, and you know, this is intergenerational, so it could be um, you know, parents and children, or grandparents, parents and children. And, sure. Uh, you know, children as, as young as four travel with us. Why? Right. Okay. Well, I just was thinking about that, and. Uh, because um, you, you probably would have to have special tours to accommodate and yep. families and pricing and everything. Well, that sounds that sounds good. Hey, we just found out. We just talked to Jean, who's not with us this afternoon, but y'all know Jean Houston over there at Piedmont Tech. She is going to, along with Jonathan, have this meeting at 6:30 in room 219C in the conference center on the Greenwood campus that's on the second floor so that's 219 C if you'd like to find out more about the Albuquerque balloon fiesta this would be an excellent opportunity and I understand if you're not going to be able to do that then that you can uh, join us for an online presentation that's right on Thursday March 6 at 1230 and there's information to register but here's what I suggest you do Call Jean if you don't if you can't make it tonight. Nine nine three one nine five five. That's nine nine three one nine five five. But um, that's that one now. But you and you're already ready almost to go on the Shades of Ireland. Yep, yep. Time to book on Shades of Ireland is uh, quickly coming to a close. Wow, that's September second through the eleventh. Ooh, the eleventh. Ooh. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, anyways, I bet that's a fascinating tour. Oh yeah, it's actually been one of our top sellers uh, for a long, long time. You know, everybody absolutely loves Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. So what do they do on this one? So uh, Shades of Ireland is um, it's a great overview tour. So you get a couple of nights while you're in Dublin, and uh, you get to do things like. Um, a city tour. Dance on top of the uh, <laughs> tables. <laughs> yep, yep. You do, you do an Irish night, of course you get to drink a lot of Guinness while you're there. A jig, yep. an Irish yep. jig, there you go, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're, you're down on Grafton Street, you're doing uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral, uh, you even have time to go and see the, the Book of Kells if you'd like. Uh, we go out to Waterford, and uh, you actually get to visit the new house of Waterford Crystal Factory. So we have a fantastic tour there, and believe it or not, they still have the largest showroom of Waterford Crystal. So it's something wow. my mother would go absolutely crazy over. Right. Uh, we're going out to uh, the Blarney Stone. You get to go to Blarney Castle and uh, kiss the Blarney oh, Stone. Oh, no Blarney there! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, this is cool. That's great. Oh yeah. Yep. Now, I think the highlight of the tour really is the last night in King's Court. Uh, we actually do uh, a castle stay, so you stay the night in the Caver Castle in King's Court. Ooh, and do you get to tell ghost stories? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. And is there any golf on this one, or? 
um, opportunity to play golf or anything? You know, I've had some groups who will do uh, a post night at the end of the tour so they can golf. I know that there's actually a nine hole golf course at the Caber Castle, but um, you know, generally with the time you have on the tour, um, you're either coming in early or leaving late if you want to do some golfing. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But, you know, that brings up an interesting question. If you want to stay an extra night or something, that can be arranged, correct? Completely possible. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you can be part of the group and then uh, stay over and take a couple extra nights if that's what you so desire. Yep, yeah, definitely. Now, um, does the tour price, does that include the airfare, or do you have to get yourself to the destination takeoff point? Well, we do actually include airfare for you if you choose to take it. Uh, and with our airfare, you actually get a free hometown pickup. So, and to my knowledge, we are the only company that offers this. What's a free hometown pickup? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'd like to be picked up then. Yes, okay, go ahead, Jonathan. All right, so what we do... We actually contract with a local motor coach company and we will come and pick the entire group up at a central location. We'll take them to the airport and then we'll drop them back off. And you know, I know for me, I think parking's going up to like nine dollars a day in Charlotte for long term at the airport. So, you know, it's a it's a huge perk when you're right. traveling. Absolutely. So uh, so when they leave from Greenwood here, they actually come here to Greenwood, pick mm -hmm. everybody up and then go to wherever you're taking off with for the air flight. Yep, exactly. Well, now, what if I decide to stay a couple extra nights? You know what? <laughs> in, in that case, um, you would provide your own transportation. transportation. Yep. Yeah, from there. Okay. All right. Well, there's uh, just some interesting points. You know, what is one of the things that you think is the most important thing to have with you on a trip? Besides your medicine and, you know, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, you know, one of the things that I always forget, I, I bought a really nice camera to take on my trips because I was sick and tired of taking pictures with my iPhone. And, right. then, you know, like, oh, this isn't so great. Right. It's, it's extra memory cards. It really is. I always forget to bring an extra one. And I'll fill up an entire memory card, and then I'll have to go, you know, hunt down a camera shop to find another one or hope that somebody I'm with is brought Or, fi another or one. find uh, some pictures that you can say, okay, delete, yeah, yeah, delete, yeah, delete. That, that wasn't so good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just delete them out, yep. So extra memory cards, that would be, and probably yeah. extra batteries, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. Well, those are the little things that you may not even think about. I think one of the things about travel to me is you always take a whole lot more than you actually need. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I always have questions from travelers about how much they can bring, you know, how many bags, what's the weight, and, you know, it, it's funny how much people want to bring on tour, and, you know, they'll ask me, you know, are there laundry facilities? And I'm like, you don't need all that, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it is hard, and particularly if you're going to have a dressy event, maybe. And exactly. And we do. You know, there's a lot of times where, you know, a, a suit is required. You know, you have to dress up for nice restaurants and dinners. But, uh, you know, for the most part, it's uh, it's all smart casual. So, yeah. So, those, and you probably always want to make sure you have really comfortable shoes. Comfortable walking shoes is a huge point, definitely. Especially walking destinations like Italy, where, you know, you may be outside walking for an hour at a time on tour, you know, you're definitely going to uh, want some comfortable walking shoes on um, some of the, you know, the cobblestone streets, for example. And flip-flops are probably not what you're really talking about for comfortable shoes, <laughs> although that is becoming the newest attire. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we are here with Jonathan Brody. He is with Colette Travel, and we are going to uh, hear South Carolina news here in just a second. By the way, I have a book here. It is over 300 pages of trips. Is there any place that you don't go? I mean, let's not talk about where we go. Let's talk about where you don't go, Jonathan. You know what? There are, really are not a whole <coughs> lot of places that we don't go. We've got a tour to Antarctica, and we've got a tour to Cuba. And, you know, tour to Cuba? We have a tour to Cuba. We do. How about that? <laughs> oh, that's kind of interesting. We'll have to check out some of these things. Who knows? Maybe I'll be doing some traveling here. Hey, yeah. you know what? We'll be back in just a second. Don't you go away. If you have a question for Jonathan, give us a call. Two two. Two nine seven nine eight four. That's two two nine seven nine eight four. Are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic, or a college tuition hung on a wall, or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? 
bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery, we can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We're right here, Sharp Facets Gallery, this afternoon, having a fascinating conversation. At least I'm having a good time. I hope you are, too. But we are talking with Jonathan Brody with uh, Colette, and uh, he's been uh, showing me in this uh, fantasy book here, I might add, all the different types of places they go. We were just looking at the uh, Rediscover Cuba tour. How about that? You actually go to Havana, you uh, actually stay right in the area. And, you know, that brings me to a question, because, you know, going to Cuba, that might be a really interesting idea. But then again, you know, you worry about people going into that area. And how does Colette um, take care of people? What if something did happen? You were talking about Egypt a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, with Egypt, uh, you know, we actually had tour groups over there when things really hit the fan and uh, unfortunately there were some other companies who had uh, tour guides who were not as loyal to their travelers as we are and, and just kind of they, they dispersed, you know, so um, our tour managers, believe it or not, kind of took these other travelers under uh, their wing and, and actually got them out, but uh, you know, for the most part, if we feel that a destination is unsafe, you know, we're, we're not going to be offering travel there. So, you know, we used to have a, a tour in Mexico. We don't do that anymore. Uh, of course, you know, Egypt, we no longer travel there anymore. And then, you know, countries like uh, Thailand recently, they had a little, uh, you know, turmoil. Uh, we actually had a little this, uh, <laughs> turmoil. Okay, Jonathan. Yeah, we, you know, we canceled our tours there recently. So, you know, we're we're really not trying to put anybody into harm's way. And then, you know, as, as far as Cuba's concerned, uh, they they absolutely love Americans. They they want love us there. American dollars yeah. for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. So um, there are tours to every place, and you also do so many places right here in the United States. Yeah, we have a ton of domestic itineraries, and uh, you know, itineraries that are, are very unique too. You know, Train to the Colorado Rockies is, is one of them. You know, I thought that one looked very interesting myself. Yeah, it, you yeah, know, it's a it's a great tour, and you get to ride on uh, four different historic trains um, and Pikes Peak. Do you get to stop at any dude ranches? <laughs> I mean, I'm about the dudes at the ranch. I mean, you know, Jonathan. I don't think any dude ranches. No dude ranches? No. Okay, well, we need to come up with one that does the Colorado Rockies and maybe a dude ranch or two. Yeah. There you go. Cause, uh, but there are so many different ways, and, and they actually, I, I think I was looking at that one, they cover an old historic uh, silver mine, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. do. Um, and actually, um, the Silverton to Durango um, Railroad that you get to ride on, um, probably my favorite part of that tour. And it's, it's actually, the train ride is the only way that you can see that part of the country. Yeah, so uh, I thought that one looked uh, very, very interesting. And I think it's really important, I think it's really important to see our country. Oh yeah, definitely. So many people forget about traveling domestically. I think you know they're they're so eager to you know visit every stretch of Europe, and they forget how many great things that we have here. You know, national parks. I, I was out in uh, Phoenix and in Scottsdale, and actually went up to Sedona this past May, and uh, I, I was completely blown away. I mean, I'd been to Phoenix in the past, but. Uh, Scottsdale, I mean, really, really took me by surprise. Sure. So, and then, of course, uh, let's see, what were we just uh, looking at a few minutes ago? Oh, yes. And how about the winery tour? That sounds like a good one. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Um, Northern California? Yeah, yeah yep, yep, Northern California. That's a, a fantastic wine tour. And we actually do uh, the wine train through the wine country. You visit the Colorado. wine train <laughs> through the wine country. Yep, yep. Okay. You get to see all of the vineyards while you're at it. You have a, a fantastic dinner. Um, you visit an olive oil factory, believe it or not. Interesting. And, yeah, you know, and, and wine is, is really a huge part of a lot of our tours. Now, believe it or not, on all of our Italy, Portugal, and Spain tours that we do, with all the dinners that we include, regional wine is included with it. It's as much as you want to drink. And, and believe me, when I was in Portugal, they do not stop pouring the wine. <laughs> 
Well, you know, and the nice thing is you don't have to worry about driving or getting yourself home. Exactly. You? You've got a DD the entire time. Yeah, that's so right. Designated driver. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Now, one of the other things I wanted to talk about that I thought very fascinating in looking through this book is the fact that you actually divide these tours up into difficulty for people who are may have some problems walking or, or ambulating throughout. Yeah, exactly. We do have uh, an activity level, um, you know, one through five, and um, you know, again, destinations like Italy, where it's more of a, a walking destination. And you, you know, the motor coaches can't get down a lot of the the medieval streets, so you're you're out and, and you're hoofing it. And right. Those comfortable walking shoes are nice. Um, so, you know, but if you like have that. somebody that isn't that ambulatory, then they either have to decide they want to go and not try to walk on some of these things. But uh, yeah, and it's not a, a blanket statement. And I, I would say that our tours are not so difficult that you know y y we would turn people away. Um, you definitely want to be pretty mobile to do some of the destinations, though. Like um, the Galapagos and Machu Picchu, for example. <laughs> you know, that's I think that's probably one of our our highest uh, activity levels that we offer and. Um, Gene was even saying earlier today that uh, you know it was it was pretty strenuous. Yeah. Now, but but the thing about this, they do have it all the way down to so darn easy. You don't even hardly to do anything. Is that right? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so you know you can pick a tour that accommodates everything that you need. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There's there's something for everybody in here, and I, I would I would say that most of what we offer is probably for everybody. Yes. So uh, make sure that you uh, check this out. Now they are having a uh, a meeting to talk about the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. That's October 5th through the 10th. Uh, let's see, it says if you book now, you can save $100 per person, which is a pretty good deal. And it is uh, tonight at uh, meeting room 219C at Piedmont Tech in the Conference Center on the Greenwood Campus on the second floor. Jean Houston, if you have any questions, give her a call, 993-1955, that's 993-1955. I think when Jean found all this travel, she really found a great niche for herself. Oh yeah, definitely. So uh, she loves travel, she loves people, and she loves putting people together with trips. And you know, it's nice because now when you travel in these groups, you're traveling with people, let's say, from your hometown, right, mm -hmm. as a group, but then they go into a bigger group, correct? Yeah, a lot of times, uh, you know, if, uh, well, I'll start out our tour group sizes. Um, generally, what you're going to see is 38 uh, people travel on them, but they can go up to 44. So if your group from where you are isn't that large, what you're going to find is, is that people from all over the country will be traveling with you. Sure. So you can put together, um, you put together more groups to, yeah, together. Exactly. But it's also kind of nice to travel with people that you might have some familiarity with. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and you know, one of the, the great things about that is that, uh, you know, if you just have five, ten people from where you are who you want to travel with, um, most of the times with, with other tour companies, you need a minimal amount of people for that tour to operate. So you can travel with other people and still you and your friends be able to travel. Absolutely. So we are here with Jonathan Brody. Another trip that uh, Jean is working on right now is the Shades of Ireland. That's right. That's going to be September 2nd through the 11th. Beautiful time, I would presume, to be in Ireland. Beautiful oh, yeah. time. Definitely. Yes. Now, I've never been to Ireland. I've been to England and whatnot. But uh, with all the castles and everything, you're going to have a great time. If you have any questions on that, I suppose you can ask questions about that tonight. Certainly. And you're going to be there tonight helping with this presentation. Yep, definitely. Absolutely. All right, we're here with Jonathan Brody. I'm Ann Eller. Hey, you got a question for Jonathan? Pick up that phone. Give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be back in just a moment. Oh, well, that's right. We're right back here. Sharp Facets Gallery. Get the frog out of my voice, Ann. Okay. There you go. I'm back. Uh, Jonathan Brody's with us this afternoon. He's going to be out there with Gene Houston this evening, starting at 630 at Piedmont Tech in room 219C in the Conference Center on the Greenwood campus on the second floor. If you have interest in travel and really want to get some uh, idea, they're actually going to be doing a, a whole presentation on the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, which is October 5th through the 10th. 
And I, if you had any questions or really wanted to get in on the Shades of Ireland, I think there's still a little time to get in on that one. And if you're interested in some other things, hey, it's a great opportunity to talk in person with people, which is what I like. I mean, I like that's uh, one of the beauties of sitting down and talking to people. And then they have this great uh, book here that has all kinds of tours in it. You can really dream. I guess you'd call this a dream book, right? Yep, yep, yeah, exactly, a dream book. Exactly. Yeah. So um, go out there and see Jean. Uh, and if you want to call her, 993-1955. That's 993-1955. And you can give her a call, find out more information, and uh, do it. Write it down, 993-1955. So, you know, I'm always interested how things get started. And, you know, uh, Colette Vacations, how did this get started? Well, I'll tell you, uh, we're actually the oldest and largest U.S.-based tour operator, and we started all the way back in 1918, if you can believe it. Wow. And uh, Did we have vehicles then? <laughs> <laughs> we, we had some, some well, uh, some jitney buses. Yes, you know, okay. I, I don't know how luxurious they were back then, but, right. um, you know, and these jitney buses, believe it or not, we were based out of Boston at the time, and we were doing 21-day motor coach tours with them. Where did you go? We started in Boston, and we traveled all the way to Florida. <laughs> Must have been a slow travel, <laughs> yes. It, it, it took about seven days to get all the way down there, and then uh, you know we traveled around for for seven days in Florida, and this was all inclusive at the time. So you know all of your hotels, your meals, your sightseeing, everything. And every day you had to stop and, in, and disembark <laughs> and get in a hotel, and then get back on the bus the yep. next morning and travel on. And people did this, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think one of the best parts about it um, that I've heard was that, you know, it's 1918, you're in Florida, it's hot, you know, people are traveling in their nice dresses and in their, you know, suit jackets, right. and, you know, there's not a, a whole lot of paved highways in Florida at the time, so, uh, you know, a lot of it's dirt roads, and, you know, consequently, there's, there's no air conditioning in the jetney buses either, so the windows are all down, so if you can imagine... You know, people getting off the bus and shaking the dust off their jackets. You know, they had to usher the people in through side doors in the restaurants. The they were so dirty. Wow. And now, um, I guess I guess one of the questions would be, um, um, let's see, 1918. Let's see, the Red Sox had won the World Series, and Porterhouse Steak, it says right here, 54 cents per pound. <laughs> And what would you pay for a porterhouse steak today, folks? <laughs> Think about it. How much did it cost to go all the way to Florida and back for 21 days? Those 21-day trips were actually $61.50. Those were the days, my friend. We thought they'd never end. <laughs> I can't say that the quality of our tours you know, have not changed much, but uh, unfortunately the prices have gone up just a little bit. Well, the prices have changed, and that motor coach is a lot more luxurious, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We keep the one from 1918 updated for everybody. Do you really? Yeah. Well, well. But um, they are the largest, and um, they are, you have worldwide offices in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. That's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, definitely. So uh, what's the future hold for you? What trips are you going to be going on, uh, Jonathan? Well, my next trip is actually in May, and I will be going to New Zealand. Oh. Uh, I know. I'm super, super excited about that. I've not seen the itinerary yet, but uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's New Zealand. That's right. all. <laughs> well, that's great. Now, do you help people in telling them the type of things that they should take for clothing and, and this type of thing? I mean... How detailed does Colette Tours get on things? Yeah, definitely. Well, one of the things that we do uh, before a group leaves on a tour is that um, we do something that we call a, a, a document party or a document meeting. So you'll get your documents, and inside this folder, I mean, you'll have um, your transfer information, your airline ticketing, um, you know, emergency contact lists, day-to-day uh, -day itineraries, travel tips, really everything that you need to travel with. Mm -hmm. And I'll come out and with the entire group, you know, we have a chance to go through it piece by piece, talk about everything, make sure that um, everybody has, you know, all their questions answered. And um, actually, Gene a lot of times will do packing demonstrations as well. 
Show you how to pack your clothes. Show you how to pack your clothes, exactly. <clears throat> is she there when you get ready? Wait a minute. Is she there when we get ready to leave to repack everything? Because yeah. that is the issue. When you get ready to leave to pack all that stuff back in the suitcase exactly. that you came in, right? Exactly. Actually, I think one of the best ideas is to take a little bag that you can carry, put over your shoulder to put those extra things that you just don't have the room for in the suitcase, right? Oh, yeah. I have some people who say that on the way home, they actually pack an extra duffel bag or suitcase inside the suitcase that they bring right. with them just so they can bring souvenirs back. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do, when we used, we used to travel a lot for uh, business, and we would literally, so that we could just get on the plane and then go and not have to wait or worry about luggage being lost, we actually used to ship our luggage oh, yeah. to the hotel. Wow. and just have it right there when we got there. That was uh, pretty darn nice, yeah, too. Yeah, that's convenient. Then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, that was when we were doing a lot of business travel and uh, such. So, uh, anything else we ought to talk about? Anything else that uh, you think that uh, maybe I haven't covered or, or, or met expectations here? What else can you tell us about Colette and things that we should know? Um, well, That's a wide open question, <laughs> Ann. Let me think about that for a second. Let me fill for a second, Ann. <laughs> hmm. Well, um, you know, price ranges of tours. Yeah, you know, it it really varies. Um, you're going to find that doing travel domestic is, is going to be a little less expensive, of course, because of the airfare to Europe and, and some of the other places. And then um, countries like uh, South America and, uh, for the most part, Asia, you're going to have. Um, a lot of inner air flights. So to get from point A to point B, you're going to have to do another flight while you're in the destination. So you know that can largely drive the price up too. But um, really, I mean, we are a solid four to four and a half star tour operator. Um, you know, centrally located hotels is a big thing that we do, um, and not only centrally located, but strategically placed as well. So. Um, you know, what we're really trying to do is make sure that when you have free time built into the tour mm -hmm. that you really don't have to use public transportation or get in a taxi. You're already in the heart of the action. And if you want to do some local shopping and sightseeing and, and hit a local restaurant, you're able to do that very easily and within walking distance. Now, um, the, the thing about it is that you, do you build in time that is free time or do you keep people so busy they don't have any free time? Well, and it, it's hard, you know, what we try and do really is have a nice balance of structured sightseeing to uh, some free time for people. Some people, you know, they want structure the entire way through the tour. So we'll have options, very few of them, you know, generally a handful at most um, that people can take while others have free time to, to get out and explore, or just kick back and maybe do some people watching wherever they are. Sure, that's one of the, that's one of the best things that uh, can happen. You know, one of the other things about going on a tour, it really makes it so you don't have to try to put all the details together. I mean, there's, there's pros and cons for everything. Yep. yep. I mean, traveling by yourself can be an experience. But there's nothing like having somebody who knows the ropes and takes care of the details so you can totally enjoy the trip. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and with that, all the details are taken care of for you. You don't have to worry about running a car. You don't have to worry about getting from point A to point B. Um, you know, things like uh, windshield time. You know, this is something I talk to people all the time and say, I want to drive out and do the national parks on my own. Well, I've done it before. And it somebody is always staring at the windshield. And you really don't get the same experience that you would... Uh, seeing it from a gigantic motor coach window or being able to step out, you know, periodically and being able to see that. And then, you know, also with that, escorted tours, I mean, like I said, we're really trying to do more than scratch the surface. You know, we really want to make sure that you have an authentic experience. So, you know, we're doing things like the Shades of Ireland we were talking about. We actually visit uh, a local farm. And, you know, right in the countryside of Ireland, we meet with uh, Patty and uh, his wife. And we sit down and we have tea and scones, and you know they, we talk about Irish life, and they tour us around the farm, and you know some of those things are are you know, probably things that you wouldn't be able to do if you had just gone to Ireland yourself. Absolutely. So uh, that's the type of thing that you're going to get if you book with Colette Tours this evening, 6:30, room 219C in the Conference Center at Piedmont Tech on the second floor. Be there if you'd like to see about going to Albuquerque. I think that would be a fantastic experience, and uh, you're going to have a special travel presentation. Gene Houston is the local rep right here in Greenwood.
you can call Jean, 993-1955. That's 993-1955. And um, come out and see what they're all about, the Shades of Ireland. They'll be talking about that. That's coming up in September, September 2nd through the 11th. Hey, I'm Ann Eller right here on WCRS. Jonathan Brody, thanks for making the trip down here to talk to us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. This has been a lot of fun and informational. So uh, check it out this evening out there at Piedmont Tech. You can't make it? Give Gene a call. 993-1955. That's 993-1955. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Bye-bye, everybody.